Hi Church, what a joy it is to meet you in our church online experience. We're so glad that you could make time uh, to watch this service and we believe that you're going to be blessed. Even as today is Palm Sunday, we're just going to be reading Psalm 24 before we get into our time of worship. And we're going to join along with the, the psalmist and worship God for who he really is. Let's read Psalm 24. The King of glory and his kingdom. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. In this particular passage, there are so many attributes of God that are being mentioned. The Lord of hosts, the King of kings, the Lord Almighty. And today, as we get into a time of worship, can our focus be on the one that we worship? Not our problems, not the struggles of the past week, not our anxieties for the week ahead, but on the one we worship. And then when we fix our eyes on him, it says, blessed is the generation that seeks his face, that we would look to his face. Because in his face, we're going to have the peace and comfort and resolution and direction that we need. So can we worship God together? We greet you and we welcome you for this time of praise and worship. We're glad that you could take time out and join us today. As the world celebrates Palm Sunday today, can we welcome him into our places wherever we are? As we sing Hosanna, Hosanna. Let's come to that point where we can open up our hearts, open up our mind and invite him to our places, wherever we are. Let's sing Hosanna. Praise is rising, eyes are turned. to you hope is stirring hearts are yearning for you we long for you cause when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all. Strength 
to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away oh sad us new Lord Jesus we pray Lord Father that you would make us new you would renewate our spirit Lord Father you would revive our inner man Lord Father Jesus 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 I see the King of glory with fire the whole earth shakes the whole earth shakes I see his love and mercy washing over all our sins the people say the people say Hosanna Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna 
heal my heart and make it clean. Would that be a prayer? Heal my heart and make it clean. Open up my eyes. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Break my heart. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom's cause. As I walk from earth into eternity. Can you lift your hands and sing? Hosanna. King of kings, to the Lord of lords. We invite you in our homes, Lord Father. We invite you to our workplace, Lord Jesus. Lord, we invite you in our conversations, Lord Jesus. In our relationships, Lord Father. In areas that we have not invited you, Lord Father. Today, even as we sang this song, Lord Father, we pray that you would open up our eyes, Lord Jesus, to the things that we have shut, to the things that we can't see. We pray that you would open up our eyes, Lord Jesus, to see it, Lord Father, to invite you, Lord Father, to take you along, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord Father, that you would go in before us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy of everything that we hold close and dear. He's worthy beyond words. Can we tell him, Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy. And today, can we take that commitment, Lord Father? I want to build my life upon that love that you showed me, Lord Father. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you.
with your love fill us with your joy unspeakable fill us with your peace that surpasses all understandings lord father fill us with all your heavenly riches lord father we pray that you would help us to endure things you would fill us with your strength lord father cover us lord father lead us through jesus hallelujah hosanna 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 to the highest hosanna we sing hosanna Father we just thank you for this time we thank you for all that you are doing we thank you lord for all that you have done and we believe that you're going, going to do great things oh father in the future we thank you lord for this new year that we have had the privilege of walking into 3 months we are so grateful to you father and lord right now we ask that you would give us clean hands lord and a pure heart lord cleanse us from everything that makes us uh, defiled oh father cleanse our hearts cleanse our minds cleanse our hands And Father we thank you for your blood which washes us clean. We thank you for your word which says if we confess our sins to you you are faithful and just to forgive us oh Father. And as we stand here washed and clean before you we thank you that you will hear our prayer oh Father. We pray very specially Lord for the nations of the world where there is war where there is famine where there is struggle and strife oh father we just pray that your awesomeness would come through we pray that people will experience you in a new way we pray oh father that relief will be given to these places we pray there will be restoration of lands and people father we pray that there will be treaties of peace that are signed we pray oh father that children who have been orphaned oh lord will be looked after father we pray for families that are right now in terrible crisis you would meet them at the point of their need oh father lord we pray for our land we pray and bless our leaders we bless the land from the north to the south the west to the east we pray lord as we enter the time of elections that your presence would hover over the land that what is right will be done oh father we pray for justice and righteousness to prevail father we pray at this time lord for any of us who are right now in this service who are struggling in some way we pray oh father that you will work in us and through us we pray god that you will touch the deepest parts of our soul you would restore us father i pray for anyone who is having any kind of health issue right now that they will find healing in you lord i pray that there will be strength in their bodies strengthen their spirits strengthen their hearts oh father for the road ahead continue to watch over them and bless them Father we pray that even as we get into the rest of this time as your word is brought to us that Lord our hearts will be prepared our hearts will be open to what you have to speak to us help us lead us guide us go before us Lord in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen church even as we get into God's word a few announcements for you our church's VBS is beginning April 29th until May 3rd we would love for your little ones between the ages of 5 to 12 to join us Uh, it's a VBS on the OMR. So if you want more details, you want the address, you want the sign up form, get in touch with us. We'd love to be um, able to help you in some way. We also have um, Friday night prayers happening at church every week. We would love for you to be part of it. It's a powerful time when we just worship God together and wait on Him for Him to do the things He's promised to do. We also have our services for Good Friday and Easter happening in person as well as online. So if you're in Chennai you're looking for a church to be part of Good Friday and Easter services are happening at 9:30 a.m. We just pray that as you get into the word today that you would really allow it to soak in. We believe it's going to bless you. We believe it's going to change your life. So let's listen into God's word. Let's prepare our hearts for that. Hi church, it's such a joy and a privilege to be bringing God's word to you today even on this Palm Sunday. As we celebrate Jesus entry into Jerusalem I believe Jesus wants to enter into each and every one of our lives into each and every one of our hearts not just a one time king a one sunday king but a everyday king who we can worship every day and so even before we get into the passage that I've chosen what I've done a little different this time is taken uh, the passage from Matthew chapter 21 and uh, I just thought uh, for understanding the context for seeing what was actually happening around in that time I've taken the reference from Lumo uh, the video series and so even as we hear from verses 1 to 11 
I pray that even as you watch, you'll be able to see and relive what it would have looked like for Jesus to make that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So let's watch right now. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So even as we watched, we saw Jesus entering into Jerusalem. We saw people were plucking those palm branches. They were taking their cloaks off and they were just laying it down and welcoming him. That was tradition back then. And we see one of the distinct responses to the king of kings coming into Jerusalem was not like how a normal king would enter. If you've seen, uh, you know, the old historical movies and things like that, you'd see kings entering in uh, in their chariots. You would see king entering in with their army. In fact, the Romans were known for that, that they would march in to show that they were the rulers with all their strength. But here we see a king who's riding on a donkey. Here we see a king who's fulfilling prophecies that was told way back. Here we are seeing a king who's walking as meek, as humble. He doesn't have an uh, army behind him. He doesn't have, he had followers, but he didn't have anyone to showcase the might that the people around were wanting. And so even today, as we look at one of the prophecies from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 10, there are key distinct things as to who this Jesus was and who he entered in as. Zechariah 9 verses 9 to 10 says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king, messianic king, is coming to you. He is righteous and endowed with salvation, humble and unassuming, in submission to the will of the Father and riding on a donkey. Upon a colt, the foal of a donkey, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the bow of war will be cut off and he will speak words of peace to the nations and his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. For those of you who are highlighting, I would like you to highlight certain key aspects of who Jesus was prophesied about, that he be righteous, he'd be endowed with salvation, he'll be humble and unassuming. And he will speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. One of the things we see, the characteristics of Jesus is when he walks in, peace follows. When he steps in, peace comes in. And so today, as this king is coming in, into Jerusalem, they expected a king who would look entirely different. They thought they probably were used to so many uprisings where they saw so many within them rise up to overthrow the empire. But Jesus didn't come to give temporary freedom. Jesus came so that each of us, you and I, all of mankind, all of humanity will be set free once for all. God was in human form. And even though he did signs, wonders and miracles, it all led to a place where he was being humble and was coming to a place of submission. He was coming to a place of submission to the will of the Father. 
He came for one purpose and that purpose was being fulfilled right as he was walking in. And so today, he tried setting a nation apart. He wanted them to follow his ways, but they were adamant. They wanted the kings to be governing over them. And in fact, even as Samuel, you know, was waiting in his old age, the elders of the uh, nation came to him and said, we want a king for ourselves, just like others. They said, your sons aren't living right. Give us a king. And Samuel said, this is what a king will demand. This is what a king will do. And God told that. And they chose, saying that we would love for a king from amongst us. They didn't want the king of kings. They rejected him back there in 1 Samuel. But Jesus is coming back as a king of kings on a donkey who's unassuming. And so today, even as we praise him, even as we worship him, you know, one of the things about Palm Sunday is about worship, is we worship a God oftentimes within the constraints of what we want him to be. But today, can we worship God for who he is? Who he is, he is everything. He is everything. He is just not one aspect of who I want, probably a deliverer, a healer, a restorer, a, you know, a person who will bring peace. No, he's everything, which means I am submitting to all of him. So when I'm praising him, is there any selfish personal gain? Is my own agenda in the forefront of saying only this I want to see happen? Am I only looking at my physical sense as the Israelites saw that day of our freedom to be set free from the Romans? But are we looking at him as we want to be free from the clutches of sin? Because he came to break dominions. He came to set us free from that. It's not for a spot deliverance. We see when Jesus was walking on this earth, he set uh, the demon possessed free. He said those who were, you know, who were bound, he set them free. But when we look to Jesus, are we looking for a deliverance that's whole? Because I believe today we are constantly going to him in part, saying, God, I want only this part to be delivered. But God saying, I want the whole aspect of this area in your life to be delivered, which means it will take time, which means it may not happen the way you would like, but I will make you wholly delivered. Are we looking for momentary relief? But God's saying, no, I don't want to just relieve you here physically, you know, for where, where your body will perish. He's saying, I want to save you for eternity. Are we looking to the, him as a deliverer who will deliver us just from an oppression? He's saying, no, I'm coming in as a king of kings. Worship me because I have delivered you from the oppressor. It's not the oppression. And oftentimes, we are just treating the surface. We need to go in and seek and ask God, God, would you please deal with me? You came here to set us free. I want that freedom. You know, and Jesus walking and Jesus entering into Jerusalem that day, was significant because he just didn't come for a select group. He came for all of us. And even as I was preparing, I was going through this whole aspect of the palm leaves. And there were clear in indicators as to the palm branches as much as it's, you know, part of that land, you know, it's available as a tree there, it grows there, it flourishes there. It, it's, there's a distinct uh, comparison that we can see across the entirety of the Bible. He exists beyond time. And it got me thinking that our worship of him should be one of that. Even as we go into God's word deeper, I want us to look at God like that. The first thing I would love for us to look at is when we worship God, we worship him for who he was. What does that look like? Two weeks back, I remember talking to you about being set apart. And I said, we go back to our ancient path. What does the ancient path look like? It's one which has been followed time and again by those who chose to follow Jesus, by those who made Jesus their Lord and Savior, by those who said, Jesus is my God and I want to follow him. Those ancient paths are one where they stuck 
to it. They didn't let culture define him. They didn't let uh, culture dictate how they would behave. Rather, they sought after that ancient path saying, Jesus, you dictate us. You tell us how we should worship you. You tell us how we should serve you. They were clear focused. They didn't have too many targets. They were clearly doing the mission that God had set out them for do. So even as we look in this, we see that in the Old Testament, the instruction that God gave to Moses specifically was for them to celebrate certain festivals, certain festivals where God had actually delivered them. And one such festival was the tabernacle uh, of the feasts. And when we see in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 39 to 44, this is what we see. Let's read verse 39. So beginning with the 15th day of the seventh month and after you have gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. The first day is the day of the Sabbath rest and the eighth day also is the day of the Sabbath rest. On the first day, you are to take branches from luxuriant trees, from palms, willows and other leafy trees and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native born Israelites are to live in such shelters so your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses announced to the Israelites the appointed festivals of the Lord. And even as I said that we worship the God of who he was, he was the God who delivered us. Here he's delivered Israel, he's brought them out of Egypt, he's brought them out of captivity, he's brought them out of slavery. And even as they're going in the uh, wilderness, he's saying, do this to remember where I brought you out from. They were temporary shelters, but he was taking them to a promised land. The instruction that he gave them is, make this a lasting ordinance to the generations to come. He wanted them to celebrate it even beyond five, ten generations. He wanted them to recount that I brought you out. When you live in these temporary shelters for these days, look back. Go back to the story. Listen from people who have lived in those eras to say, this is what the Lord did. And even as we worship today, we are going to go back to a place of in our own lives and say, God, what is it you did in my life? That's why our testimonies matter. That's why our stories matter. That's why how we talk about God matters. We, when we look back, we are looking at that point when God delivered us. Where was that point when God really redeemed us, where we had that salvation experience? We made it our own. We felt Jesus near. We felt our ears were so tuned because life happens. When life happens, we grow numb. When life happens, we get so tuned that we are able to just say everything what we have to say. We struggle because we get so caught up with the worries and the needs that are happening around us. We get so worried about the way we want to control things around us, the people, the children, the circumstances. But God saying, go back to who I was. Didn't I deliver you? Why are you worried now? Didn't I deliver you? Why are you worried now? Didn't I deliver you? Why are you being anxious today? And we see that when the minute they went into the promised land, after the time of Joshua, this entire thing stopped. They couldn't, they didn't celebrate at all. They got distracted. The kings came in. The people surrounding them convinced them. So today, church, if we are going to worship God, we are going to worship God for who He was. Who He was. He was the God of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac. He was a God who gave clear instruction and He asked His people to obey. And so today, if we are not obeying, we are not worshipping. Today, if we are not doing what God's called us to do, our worship fails. From that timeline, when that happened, we see right in Nehemiah chapter 8, where it recounts that they forgot God completely. Nehemiah 8, 13 and says, On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and the Levites, gathered around Ezra, the teacher, to give attention to the words of the law. They found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses, that the Israelites were to live in temporary shelters during the festival of the seventh month. 
and that they should proclaim this word and spread it throughout the towns and in Jerusalem. Go out into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild olive trees and from uh, myrtles, palms and shade trees to make temporary shelters as it is written. So the people went out and brought back branches and built themselves temporary shelters on their own roofs, in their own courtyards, in the courts of the house of God and in the square by the water gate and the one by the gate of Ephraim. The whole company that had returned from exile built temporary shelters and lived in them. From the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until that day, the Israelites had not celebrated it like this, and their joy was very great. We see that they stopped celebrating this feast. And even as we go deeper, you will see they got distracted. That next generation which had to do it got distracted. Life happens, we will get distracted, but our worship should always be to the one who was. Our God was. He delivered and He will deliver. He was. If He did it back then, He will do it today. If He did it back then, He will do it today. If revival happened back then, it will still happen. Am I desiring for it? Am I wanting it? What happened? Why did it? so many years, so many generations miss out? on recounting what God did. Yeah, there would be a remnant few, but the, the instruction was clear. May we move ourselves to a place where we will never be comfortable with the comforts of this world. We will never be comfortable. You, you can get the new phone, you can get the latest thing that you want, but you'll soon realize there's always much more than you want. There's always much more you can get. There's always much more you can uh, make yourselves comfortable by. And as I look more deep into God's word, God's asking, are you having a holy discomfort when it comes so that you'll be able to listen to what I'm saying? We see that in being in the promised land, for the Israelites, caused them to move away from God. Yes, they moved from slavery to the promised land. They occupied the land. They fought all those giants. But somewhere down the line, the generations following gave in to the pressure of what was around. And today God's asking, will you stand strong? Which means, am I giving to the comfort of the promised land that I am just so concentrating on the promise that I am making sure my, it's just me, myself, my house, my agenda, is my comfort more important? The second thing is, is my worship costing me anything? Today, our time and effort, we, we, when we say, you know what, we want to serve God, we come with our conditions to serve God. But God's saying, no, I want you to serve so that you'll be able to do what I'm calling you to do. I don't want you to do what you want to do. Which means the people who actually went ahead for us, when God said, you know, when they worshipped him and they said, we are worshipping the God who was, they did something only what God required. And God is asking us, will you do what I require of you to do? Somehow we fail to share God's faithfulness in everything. Our praise is constricted to the culture and we are just trying to fit in. We are trying to fit in, we are trying to match up, we are trying to play catch up. Today, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, he was just entering as, you know, uh, Jesus, the son of a carpenter. No, he was the king of kings and the lord of lords. He was God in human form who was entering in. He was the God who was. He was there when the Israelites were in captivity and when they walked through the wilderness and when they got the promised land. He was reclaiming, he was bringing back. He was bringing back saying, hey, let's go back to God and do what he requires. And so today, when we look at this, when we look back our, of what, who God was, it should always come to a place where God, I'm praising you for what you've done. Because when I praise you for what you've done, I'm realizing that only you are in control. I'm not in control. Every day he works out something on our behalf. So can we be intentional about seeing God in our everyday life? Can we be intentional when we praise him for what he has done, when we praise him for what he has done in the past, what is ahead looks conquerable because God is with us, because we know who to call on. 
praise arises from the scriptures that we have in our hands. We use his word and we praise him. We see Ezra, as he's reading here, he took the living word of God. It was buried. You know, kingdoms had come trampled over. He brought it, in fact, it says some of the scriptures that he had, but it was a living word of God. So today, even as for some of you, I strongly believe God's calling you to some of the passages that God spoke over you. Go back to them because our worship is in, in, in what God has spoken. Every song that we sing births out of the word of God. It's found in scripture. So if you want to worship God for who he is, more than actually just singing and listening to the song, go back to his scripture. Read. Let the living word come alive in you and you'll be able to see who God was. The second aspect we see is we worship God for who he is. Who he is to us. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem, a lot of them saw him with different lenses. Some saw him with Okay, he's Mary and Joseph's son. Some, oh, he's from Nazareth. And so they had a boundary wall around that. Okay, probably the Nazarenes are like that. The disciples saw him differently. It says when you read in that passage, a lot of it didn't make sense till they saw Jesus when he was resurrected and when he had met with them. But Jesus who was walking into Jerusalem was actually walking uh, fulfilling so many things. And I just highlighted a few things because that's who he is even today. That's who he is even today. John 6, 38. He fulfilled the will of the Father. Verse 38 says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. As we worship, we are worshipping the one who did the will of the Father. The second thing I've highlighted is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. He came down to save sinners. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Paul writes this to Timothy and encourages him. And when he says this, Jesus came with a specific goal to save sinners. He came down for all of mankind, but until and unless they realize they need saving, they don't need a savior. Paul is very clear that till people identify themselves as sinners, that's why we say the sinner's prayer, that God, my heart is deceitful. My heart is full of sin. We need you. You are the one who saved us. Would you come in? So we worship our Savior. We worship who is. Our worship is towards our Savior. The third thing is from John 12, 46. He brought light into this dark world. I have come into this world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. The Jesus who entered in that day was one who actually had came down to bring light into this world. He was there in the beginning when light came into darkness. And the very person was actually walking into Jerusalem as the light. And he is still today the light of the world. So today, even as we worship who he is, he is the light into this dark world. The fourth thing is, we see in John 6, 51, eternal life is through Jesus. 51 says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. We saw him, him coming in all humility and submission to the will of the Father and going into Jerusalem was so that we all will get to have eternity with him. Jesus didn't, didn't die, he rose again. We are worshipping a living God. So when we say we are worshipping a God who is, he is eternity. We see in 1 John 3, 8, he came to put an end to devil's work. The one, verse 8 says, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Amen. We are worshipping the God who is, he is the one who came to put an end to devil's work. We also see in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 8, that he was humble even to death. There was so many aspects where he could have stood up and said, you know what, you don't know what you're accusing me of. No, but he came down as a lamb led to the slaughter. He was a perfect lamb. In him, there was no sin. And so even as he walked in all humility, we who worship Jesus today 
have to walk in all of that humility. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8 says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death to a cross. So today, when we worship Jesus, there is a clear line that we are called to walk on in all humility. If Jesus walked in this world in all humility, we are called to walk in this world in all humility. Today we see this word and we, as we read and we see the responses of them all worshipping, we see that they worshipped thinking that they'll be set free from the clutches of the Romans. But today we are being set free from the clutches of sin. We are being set free from the strongholds and the hand of Satan over our lives. And we see Jesus did that as he walked in, as he, you know, traveled on that donkey. He did it in meekness and in majesty. As much as it seemed meek, there was something majestic about him. There was something majestic about him. So Palm Sunday is a reminder of who Jesus is. He's just not someone who walked. He just didn't do a ramp walk once. No, he, when he walked, he was setting the clear record straight. He walked in to make sure that the curtain wall will be broken, will be divided so that all of us have access. So today, if someone tells you that, you know, you can have access only through this person or if you have to pray, no, you have access to God because you can call on his name. He's saying, anyone who calls on my name, I will listen. I will hear. Even as you saw the video earlier, you saw the Pharisees were questioning, why are they shouting? Why are they doing this? And we see when we worship him, we worship him for who he is. Even as I read to you right now, he's the one who did the will of the Father. He's the one who came to save the sinners. He's the one who brought light into the darkness. He's the one in whom we have eternity and eternal life. He came to put an end to the devil's work. He walked in all humility, even to death. When we see all of that, we see Jesus for who he is. The Pharisees thought he is another person who's come in. They were so insecure that he will, they, he will move the people away from him. He didn't, they didn't realize that he's fulfilling the scriptures. So today, even as we follow Jesus, as we worship him, our agendas have all have to come down. Our, 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 our status, our positions all come down. When we all bow down, we all surrender our crowns. Whatever crown we are wearing, some of us wear a crown of superiority thinking we are from a higher caste. Some of us wear a crown of thinking we are of higher influence. Some of us wear a thing thinking we are from a higher tribe, from thinking we are from a, from a, from a higher part of society. No, in Jesus, everyone is equal. Everyone. There's no difference between the rich and the poor. To him, we are the created. And he's created all of us in his image. Today, the people wanted freedom from oppression. The people wanted freedom from the physical uh, taxing that they were being done by the Romans. They wanted freedom from so many things. And today, a lot of us want freedom from so many things. Probably you're in debt. Probably your relationship with your spouse is not the greatest. Probably you've been struggling to even get married and find that person. Because every time you try meeting someone, there are some red flags that are coming. Probably you are in a dire situation where you've been caught in something which is totally out of this world, where you thought this wouldn't happen to you. But God's saying, would you raise a worship altar to me today? Because I can step in. I am who I am before, I am even that same God today. Luke 19 verses 37 to 40, we see when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. They 
were shouting in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Today, God's asking, will we shout and worship Him even for the miracles we don't see? You know, we trust processes a lot. We trust that, you know what, if we go to this particular government office, this will be done. Document A, document B, document C, and I should be getting this. This is how the world is structured processes. This is how companies and everything, we think of a process so that it will be done step by step. But today our worship is not to a God of process. Our worship is to a God who will do it His way. And I am coming in submission to that. If God in human form could submit to the will of the Father, I who am a who have just been created in his image have to submit to his will so that I can see it happen his way. And Jesus is saying, Would you submit to my sovereignty? My sovereign way. My sovereign way of doing this. Today, what what aspect of life is Jesus working in and through you that you've been struggling to say, God, this is not being done my way. Jesus is saying, no, allow it to happen my way. When I open the doors, when I open your heart, when I open your emotions, I will see to it. I am in control. I would lead you. And one of the things we see here, people rejoice because of the miracles he had done or they heard about it and they thought, okay, you know what, if we can praise him, he is, he is, blessed is he who comes. If we, if he can even do a miracle with the governance, probably is what they thought. But God has different ways and different methods of working certain things out. Are we willing to still worship him when we see it happen his way and not our way? Are we still okay to worship him when we see it happen in his timing and not in my timing? And the response that Jesus gives to the Pharisees is very important. Because at that time, Jesus is God. He didn't pre, uh, you know, judge the people who were giving him praise, knowing he knew that one week from now they will turn against him. But he still received their praise. So today, if you're worried, you know what, God, today my praise is going to be conditioned because I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with this. No, don't be worried about tomorrow. Worry about today. Can you praise God today for who he is? Tomorrow will worry about itself. But if you fail to praise God for who he is today, you will regret tomorrow because you could have praised God today but better. You could have praised God in a more better way. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a place of saying that let's move to make sure our worship is, we've given it all every day so that we live with no regrets. One of the things of worshipping the God who is, is the fact that we worship Him saying, God, this is who you are. But we also understand that we, who've now received Jesus into our heart, He breaks our heart. We see here, Jesus, there's something beautiful that happens in Luke 19 verses 41 to 44. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you on the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. We see Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. And I believe when we start worshipping him, when we start worshipping him for who he is, he will start breaking our hearts so that we will start weeping for what we need to be doing here on this earth. God's redemption power is just not for us to be redeemed and left alone, but it's for us to be redeemed so that we'll be able to do what he wants us to do in this broken world. Transformation that he's causing us to see will happen here. When we've put this byline saying set apart to bring heaven here on earth is because we've received heaven's gift that's Jesus into our lives. We are responders today to bring Jesus here on this earth. So what is God really breaking your heart today? What aspect is he really breaking? Is it, is it 
on the lines of poverty? Is it on the lines of offense? Is it in the lines of, you know, education? Is it in the lines of leading marriages? What is it? Because you will soon realize God is distinctively breaking some area of your heart so that you'll be concerned far more for the people outside than your own four walls of your home. And I've seen time and again that when we the biggest struggle that we really had in accepting and when we receive Jesus into that particular area, He uses us to minister the strongest in that area. So I pray that we will identify our brokenness. Some of us are so prideful that we think we are not broken, but there is a heavy breaking that's happened in our life. Can we allow Him to come into our hearts, showcase that, heal that so that He will be able to use us mightily in the days to come. Jesus' heart broke for all humanity. We as is created, our hearts will break for a particular area. It won't break for the entirety because we can't handle it. And so when we pray, we start, you know, every time uh, He shows us and says, this is what my heart's broken. So that's what a church beautifully combines or is a collective of. It's a collective of people who've accepted Jesus and Jesus is breaking each and every one's heart for a particular area. And so eventually, if you bring all of them together, it's the entirety of a city, entirety of a nation. And I believe as each and every one of us identify the per plan and purpose that he has for us, as we start walking and accomplishing it, we will be his hands and feet in that specific area that he's calling us. Oftentimes, the very place where we lack and we had Him come in, Jesus come in and work, will the very place He will use us to minister. We will no longer be in receiving mode because we've received His healing. We are being healed, but we'll come to a place of received and now we're giving it. We're saying, hey, you know what? You can find freedom from alcohol. You can find freedom from, you know, uh, uh, from drugs. You can find freedom from actually, you know, from your sexual addiction. You can find freedom and be committed to the love of your life here, who's your spouse. He will give you freedom from your, uh, from your sexual identity if you're struggling with that. But it will come down to a place of us really allowing Him and worshipping Him for who He is. This Palm Sunday, may our genuine worship be to the King of Kings who walked in. He was meek, but he was majestic. He, in all meekness, he came in and fulfilled, but it was all of his majesty that came in with that. And the second thing is, as we worship him for who he is, may God break us so that we will be able to be his hands and feet. We'll be able to dirty our hands. We will be able to dirty our hands. Just um, this uh, week, uh, we have a dog at home and one of the things of having a dog uh, which, you know, which we got during um, the pandemic is the fact that the dog is so domesticated and uh, we named her Mocha and so we realized that, you know, there's, um, we are unable to do certain things because everything revolves around her who takes care of her and so one of the things we decided at the start of this year is we needed to get her trained to be in a kennel. You know, and uh, so this week was a time when we actually did it and more than actually and I'd planned it out. I'd been actually telling my wife uh, for the last three months, coaching her, working her through this whole thing. And we booked it. We went, we dropped her and we realized that she automatically caught certain traits of her master. So she's here in the kennel, they have sand, all the dogs are playing, but looks like she's averse to sand and my wife uh, doesn't like the beach sand much. She can, you know, she doesn't like it sticking and uh, to her feet and all that. And you can see certain traits just rub off. And even as I, 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 you know, they kept sending us updates of videos of how she was doing there. And I just realized, God, I want to have that same kind of trait where I am so much in close contact with you that I start rubbing uh, the qualities of you so much in my life. So much that when I go into the actual world, I'm not behaving like her where, you know, I can't, but I am actually willing to be there. Because my dislikes when rubbed off doesn't serve anyone. 
but when i start rubbing off the the true nature of christ in my life i start becoming useful in the world where he's placed me i don't they i don't uh, come across as a standoffish uh, you know person who can't talk to everyone no i start becoming his hands and feet where you know the sin doesn't cause me not to talk i start seeing people for who god's created them to be i start speaking with hope i start speaking with love care genuine care and so that is the worship that jesus wants us to have when we worship him worship him for who he is the third thing we worship is we worship god for who is to come and i love this because i i think god's moving uh, the the worship globally to be singing songs of who is to come because the world is so broken we see wars we see leaders who are campaigning who we don't even have hope in we see the 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 lies that are being spread around we see so much of um, uh, you know um, there's no love for humanity people killing one another we see people pulling down one another we see so much of hatred but if our eyes are focused on the one who is to come we will be able to run this race well what does that mean jesus when he came here into this earth even as he walked in on palm sunday he was walking in so that eternity will be set he was walking in so that our eternity will be secure he was walking in so that we will spend eternity with him what so what is praise looking for us today uh, we saw that the israelites imbibed they they intermarried they they caused uh, you know they disobeyed god's laws entirely and we see them move away from god but if we have to worship the god who is to come we have to stick to what god's called us to do we cannot move away from that we you know and today let's move into a place of you know why should i not do this why can't i do this is this what the bible says more than what the bible says what is god telling you because honestly if we looked at scripture as to what is god telling me through the scripture we will make better decisions and i believe when god is asking us to worship him for who is to come we will soon turn our worship in every circumstances we will soon start churning out worship in every situation our response would wouldn't be one of how can i problem solve this who can i call who's the who's the person i can dial in my contact list no it will be one of worship we see and in, in acts 1525 paul and silas undaunted prayed in the middle of the night and sang songs of praise to god while all the other prisoners listened to their worship today paul and silas given the situation i believe will be doing the same thing there are key words in which the passion says is they were undaunted and they prayed in the middle of the night today if a lot of you who are plagued by loneliness by you know by anxiety by depression by anything emotional if your spirit is low open the word of god we have audio bibles listen to the word of god if people who were in the prison rooms were able to listen and experience the breakthrough that came because of worship you and i can also experience it because of the word of god today i believe in this day and age more than us looking to interpret the word of god more of us looking to find the revelation of the word of god let the word of god be spoken over your life because when it's spoken out your eyes automatically are lifted to the one who is to come your spiritual eyes are suddenly like god in line of eternity is this how i should respond in line of eternity is this how i should lead my family in line of eternity is this how i should uh, behave with one another peter walking out of jail was a direct correlation because worship was being raised somewhere else so today even as we worship with prayer and supplication even as we have our friday nights open heavens happening it's because we believe when we are worshiping here something else is happening some place else and it's okay even if i don't get to hear about it we don't have to be the first people to hear about the news but i'm sure some day down the line someone will come and say you know what friday at 10:30 pm something happened in my house and we'll be able to know because there were a few of us here worshiping am i content with that 
I am content with that. So today, our worship is to a God of who is to come. Which means, because He is coming, I'm not, it's not like I'm not doing anything. It's because He is coming, I will keep doing everything. I will keep doing everything. A lot of us have become complacent. You know, we are like, uh, yeah, he's coming, my eternity is secure. So, you know what, chalta hai, I'll just like, uh, you know, cruise through life. No, God is saying, I've created you with a purpose. Fulfill the purpose. There has to be a burning flame for you to go and fulfill it. We are so conscious about fulfilling things for our immediate circle. Oh my, this is what I should eat. This is what I should wear. This is what I will do. This is how I will avoid everything else so that I don't become anxious. No, if you're worshipping God, you will allow all of Him. And He will guide you. He will guide you. So today, even as we look, I want us to keep our eyes on Jesus. This is what Hebrews says in Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 3. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path that has been already marked out before us. We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus, who birthed faith within us and who led us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. I love how we can end this, because he modeled it for us. He loved us. He came down. He bore everything so that you and I can be saved. So today, because of us being saved, we have to go through life, go through everything so that we can see him face to face, so that we'll be able to see him and say, God, you are my God. Thank you that I, can, I can't wait to stand along with the great cloud of witnesses. He is coming back. He is coming back. So today, when we meet him face to face, it shouldn't be like God, it shouldn't be like one of those, uh, the person who received uh, the last bit who went and buried it. Our salvation is not meant to be buried and left somewhere hidden, no. It's meant to be lived out, which means it's meant to be lived out in and with people. Revelation 7 talks about this beautiful place where we will all stand in front of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And even as I was um, going through this, I realized that there was a phrase where it says that we'll be standing there with palm branches. And so even as we look through the entirety of scripture, the palm branches in the beginning when we read in Leviticus was for one, was showcased so that we will remember of the God who was with us in that wilderness season, who brought us, who was our deliverer. We see that we need to worship the God who is, that as he walked in in all humility to die for us, he was on a mission and he did it and we worship him for who he is. But we also will be worshipping the true and living God in eternity face to face, not, you know, without any pain, without any sickness. We will have our entirety looking different there. When we see him face to face, we will worship our King. We will worship our Lord. This is what it says in Revelation 7. I looked again, I saw a huge crowd, too huge to count. Everyone was there, all nations and tribes, all races and language. And they were standing dressed in white robes and waving palm branches, standing before the throne and the Lamb and heartily singing, Salvation to our God on this throne, salvation to the Lamb. All who were standing around the throne, angels, elders, animals, fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Oh yes, the blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, the honour and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Oh yes. As we see them waving palm branches, I am reminded that these people who actually waved and who actually turned around Jesus and said, you know, crucify him, these people who are waving today, are waving to the true and living King. They have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. One of the aspects of worshipping is the fact that everyone is gathered. The church that gathers is for all. It's by all and it's for all. The church 
is no longer just okay this is just going to be a single church or it's going to be a marriage church no it's for all all of us have stages in life all of us move in stages so today the church is everything for everyone be it single married be it young and old be it barren or fruitful be it master or slave be it rich or poor be it educated or uneducated the church is called to keep their eyes on him so that we'll be able to run this race well and today i don't know what is causing you to not wave those palm branches and say jesus you are king i don't know what is holding you back because to worship who he was it is tough because many a times the hurt the struggle the the scarring the the abuse everything that we've gone through is hard but if he was our deliverer back then he is our deliverer today also he who he, god is today our worship is to who he is today also he is still our deliverer he is still our god he still is seated on the throne he still is the victorious one over the deceiver and so i don't know what circumstance you're going today but don't discount the god who did everything before he will do it again and the god who does it today will continue to lead as long as you keep your eyes on eternity the minute you move your eyes from eternity to something here on this earth it will become tough because you will people pleasing will start coming in you will start doing decisions saying things which are not of you and which god does not expect of you because you're trying to please people but god saying would your attention be towards me would your eyes be towards me live out the way i've called you to lord and that's what we see in the apples it's time and again the church went through hard times they lived sustained through it because their eyes were on jesus and on eternity we see that the binding factor in all of this is worship we worship him for what he's done we worship him for who he is and we worship him for who he is to be in our future so church i don't know what your week is looking like i don't know what you're going through specifically but jesus when he entered jerusalem wasn't it wasn't a broadcast live event where all of us could tune in he it was just a normal day where he was entering into jerusalem it was a destined moment in history because that was when redemption was coming for mankind in a week and today god saying would you still worship me i don't know for some the as i'm leading and standing here right now i can sense the spirit of god distinctly telling me a lot of you have experienced jesus you've heard you you your own miracle your birth miracle is 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 one of a miracle your being born itself is one of a miracle but today you stand confused discounting him and i would say would you return back to jesus he's willing to be your deliverer today whatever is oppressing you would you, i would ask you would you open the word of god let the word of god come alive in your spaces today be it your home be it when you're traveling listen to it when you're discouraged let that be your refuge go back to the word open it up if you can't don't feel like reading it listen to it you have different ways in which you can listen listen to it let it soak your spirit man so that that will be renewed to look to jesus and say i am doing this so that i'll be able to see and be in eternity with you the times are tough we are walking into seasons where it is going to be tough to live this christian faith but god is saying would you live it out in all boldness so even right now i would ask if you can just close your eyes wherever you're at i just want to pray along with you lord we thank you lord that even as we celebrate palm sunday we welcome you king king of kings and lord of lords lord we can't wait for that day when we can stand and see you face to face worshiping you lord our minds can't fathom it Lord it it seems we can figure something out but Lord we can't wait to see that glorious day where we won't see a lot of the things that we see in today's world we won't see that we will see you in all your glory and we want to declare with our mouths holy forever holy forever you are holy forever 
King of Kings today, would you walk into our hearts? I pray specifically for those who have discounted you, who have, Lord, run away from you, who have been, Lord, holding on to their hurt and their bitterness far too long that they have, Lord, uh, detested you, Lord. Would you come in? Would you walk in? Would you come in and be God over their lives? Would you be their Savior again, Lord Jesus? I pray, Lord, even for those who are walking through tough path, that we will rise a worship to you, Lord. May we never come to a place where our worship is so quiet that the stones will start crying out. But may we worship whatever circumstances, we will worship you. Whatever our situation is, we will worship you. Whatever we are going through, we will worship you. That will be our only response, Lord. We will see you come through. Come down upon us, Lord Jesus. I pray you would protect us, be with us. Bless this week, Lord, even as we step into Good Friday and Easter. That will be a week where we will encounter you, Lord Jesus. Go before us and strengthen us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pray that even as you step out, that you will step out in boldness. We will never be able to worship enough. But we can worship him for all he is. Worship him in every day. Have your moments. Make those moments personal. Corporately come participate in worship. Come expectant. Come say, God, I'm coming today. I want to hear from you. I want to worship you. Reveal yourself. And I pray that he will reveal himself to you. As you step out this week, I pray his hands of protection be upon you. Go in peace. I pray you will enjoy his protection, health and strength. Pray that you have a blessed week. God bless you all. So church, can I close today's service? May the love of the Father, the grace of his only Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all and have a blessed week ahead. Church, even as we just heard, I pray that you will experience this King in all his glory. That, Lord, that you would know that the one who was and is and is to come is with you. That he strengthens you for your journey, that you are not alone. So be encouraged even as you walk in this week, that you will walk with the strength that he brings. Remember this, whoever finds Jesus, finds life. God bless you.